the reason I started doing fecal transplants was I always had kind of an interest in the microbiome and the bacterial uh, contribution to gastrointestinal disease. So uh, I'd always been sort of a proponent of probiotics all along uh, since starting clinical practice and uh, sort of uh, followed the research on fecal transplants kind of casually and then it started to really accelerate and pick up over the last couple of years in the literature as I was following it and then obviously more recently there's been some really uh, landmark studies done on fecal transplant and um, more and more as time has gone on we see C. diff throughout the hospital becoming uh, much more common than it was even when I was a medical resident even more common in the community than it was five, ten years ago. So in the short time I've been practicing, it's become uh, really a difficult disease to manage with what we had, which was just antibiotics. So seeing this becoming a new way to treat something and, and having the success rates that it had uh, really kind of pushed me to work towards getting this procedure locally. The FDA allowed, starting in July 2013, um, practitioners, gastroenterologists, infectious disease, practitioners to perform the procedure without doing an investigational drug application. That really opened it up to people who were interested in doing it that maybe didn't have a full university staffing behind them to do all the paperwork that's sometimes involved. So less paperwork allowed it to be done. AM Surge was great because they had had some, it seemed like preliminary research, preliminary data on how to um, put something like that in an endoscopy center. A lot of times those processes are done in hospitals, but certainly a lot of the patients that need it are healthy enough to be done at an ASC. So they had done some of their own preliminary research on it, I think on the nursing end especially, um, in regards to some of the specifics for inc infection control, cleaning of the rooms, things like that, things that doctors don't always think about. So they were good with that, uh, really complimentary in that. Uh, I had written the protocol with the help of another physician who sort of pioneered fecal transplant from a physician end of it. So that protocol was in place, they reviewed it, really were uh, great, no significant interference. Everything they had to say was really uh, additional info that was helpful in getting it on board. Gastroenterologists, if they want to perform this procedure, have to familiarize themselves with the uh, data that's out there, the literature that's out there, so that you can become, quote unquote, a uh, kind of an expert in, in a fecal transplant. At least you know the research, you know what's been out there, um, and it's pretty easy to find nowadays. The other thing, gastroenterologists, I mean, it's, it, the procedure itself is not difficult. It's not technically challenging. It's a colonoscopy, and you're basically instilling stool once you're at the end of the colon. Uh, I think th that the more challenging part is getting a protocol in place at your center, at your hospital. That can be tedious. You want to make sure you, you, you know, cross all the T's, dot all the I's, do everything you need to do, you need to, do to have your nurses on board. AmpSurge had a helpful role uh, specifically at our center because I think it f made our nursing supervisor here and our nurses in general feel more comfortable that they were on board and had some of their own input and their own protocols in place specifically in regards to the nurses. So I think they felt, I think they trust me and they trusted my protocol, but I think it addressed some of their concerns that I, I may not have thought of from a nursing technician standpoint. The first transplant we did here was actually filmed on local television. Uh, the local news, the NBC uh, affiliate here filmed that. So that was really helpful. Uh, we had a relationship with one of the uh, anchors there and she was interested in this. So we filmed the first one and that's, that's broadcast over a lot of the counties in the area. It stretches you know, almost two hours to the west and an hour to the east. So patients were, were self-referring based on the video. Um, we also had some patients in mind through partners of mine who had been having recurrent episodes of C. diff. So over the course of the prior six to 12 months, we kind of accumulated a list of some patients, both my own and some of my partner's patients that needed the procedure. And um, it's, it's sort of, you know, gone from there. People that have this tend to get it more in a recurrent fashion. It's very common for that to happen. So it's easy to find these people because we're seeing them so frequently with recurrences. The patient's uh, reaction to the procedure and the discussion surrounding the procedure has been positive. Most of these patients, or a lot of these patients, have kind of researched the procedure on their own prior to coming in. The internet can be good and bad, but it's very good in regards to this procedure because they're, it's allowing patients to educate themselves. They ask good questions. They ask about our own success rates. They ask about success rates nationally. You know, they want to reiterate what the positive 
um, research has shown. They ask a lot of questions about the donor, who's an appropriate donor, and they ask a lot of questions about cost, because that's something you can't really find on the internet necessarily. So that's something that they have some, some nervousness and anxiety about, but usually it's affordable, um, because again, a lot of it is covered. Um, the other thing patients tend to ask is, how long will it be till I see a result? Um, you know, what kind of result should I expect? and what to expect going forward after the, after the procedure. The best advice to give other gastroenterologists who might be considering this procedure is to make sure you obviously review the literature, have your protocol in place before you, you, know, before you present, make sure you're well read so you can answer any questions that an, an advisory board or a safety board or your nurses will have. Uh, a lot of questions pop up in the process and um, generally these questions are answered by prior research, prior protocols that are available. So if you're able to be well read in those, it's pretty straightforward. Very rewarding and worth it once you're able to do those things.